Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. I'll go ahead and begin. I'm going to be talking tonight about discovering extrasolar planets, or as we refer to them in the field, exoplanets, uh, particularly with an emphasis on the Kepler Space Telescope. Kepler was launched four years ago this week and has been on a sole mission to detect an Earth-sized planet orbiting a star like our sun in its habitable zone. And I'm going to describe that in a second. But first, I want to back our story up to 1995 when 51 Pegasi b was discovered. This is the first planet ever discovered orbiting what's known as a main sequence star. That is to say, a star that's burning hydrogen and helium like our own sun is. The, star, as you, the planet, as you can see, is about half the mass of Jupiter and is orbiting so close it is boiling at 1,800 degrees. Meanwhile, in 2004, the Hubble Space Telescope image directly imaged for the first time a planet orbiting a star called Formahalt. This planet is far, far away from its parent star, but even so, we still have to use extensive techniques to, just to block out its light. So, observing a planet directly near a star is like trying to catch a match held next to a flood lamp. It's very difficult to detect, and what we're interested in knowing is whether or not this planet can exist in that magical distance called the habitable zone. So hotter stars have habitable zones farther away. Cooler stars have habitable zones that are much closer to their stars. We want to use Kepler to look at a single point in the sky, a very large, actually, area of the sky in the constellation Cygnus, looking at 150,000 stars all at the same time. Uh, this is accomplished by using 42 uh, large CCD detectors. And as you can see, even though it's a large part of the sky, Kepler is peering into a relatively small portion of our galaxy. So the idea here is a numbers game. We're trying to see if we can find planets around a nice selection of stars and use that to extrapolate to create statistics about the likelihood of Earth-sized planets elsewhere in our galaxy. But again, finding a, star, finding a planet next to its star is extremely difficult. So rather than trying to take a picture, what Kepler does is it tries to measure the tiny difference in its brightness as this planet transits in front of the star. So we take a light curve. So we're watching for that star to just flicker out. It's like turning off one light bulb out of 10,000. And what we have at the top is a... Uh, light curve of one particular planet. This is Kepler 22b. And as you can see, there's just that tiny little drop off in light measured once every 290 days. Here we have some phased light curves below. And you can infer things such as the relative size of the planet to a star. Uh, you can infer its, its uh, inclination. And by the way, there at the upper, upper right is a, an image of Jupiter what it would look like transiting our sun, comparing that to some of the planets that we've seen transiting stars. Again, these are not photos of stars, these are artists' impressions, but they give you an idea of how we can characterize the size of planets relative to the stars. And of course, we can characterize the size of the planets themselves. Most of the planets that were found early on were these massive, so-called hot Jupiters that orbit very close to their star. But then we began to find planets uh, about the size and even slightly smaller than Neptune. And we've even found a planet orbiting binary stars, which is very exciting because when I was studying astronomy, we weren't sure if a binary system could have planets. Of course it does. However, this, would, this particular planet is a gas giant, so there wouldn't be Mark Hamill looking up and seeing double sunsets. But if you were on a moon around this planet, whoa! Now. Things got really exciting just this year because we discovered a planetary system orbiting a star that's a bit cooler than our sun, but as you can see, Kepler 62 E and F are right there in the habitable zone. They're larger than Earth, but they're right there. This is what we're looking for, and Kepler 69 is even more interesting. Here we're finding this planet only a, a little bit larger, about, well, about, you know, one and a half times the size of Earth. It's almost certainly a rocky world like our own planet. It's right there in the habitable zone, right there where the temperature is just right that maybe liquid water could exist and maybe life could exist. So we're narrowing down the statistics. We're taking Kepler's field of view and we're showing you all the different sizes of planets that we have detected. And there's quite a lot detected. We have 132 confirmed of these planets. Several of them are Earth size, but we have nearly 3,000 planets left yet unconfirmed that we're almost certain are there. 
So this is what astronomers really do. We take data and we plot it and we generate these correlation diagrams. You could see on the far right the relative sizes of planets, the planet radii. You can see Earth down there and we're looking for that one planet the size of Earth that has the same orbital period as Earth. And here is a beautiful plot. You'll see that most of the planets discovered to date are about the size of Neptune, but we're beginning to find Earth-sized planets. And yes, some of them are in their habitable zone. We haven't found exactly that one planet yet, but we're getting closer and closer. But we have so much data. Let's make apps out of them. This is Exoplanet. It's taking data that's on GitHub. I can't believe someone hasn't written an app by now. I've been speaking for three minutes. This is a Cold Vision conference. Come on. Anyway. <laughs> Get this app, it's free, it's fantastic, and it alerts you when a new planet is discovered. And you can look at the light curve. You can also visit Uingo, and you can nominate a name for one of these exoplanets. I nominated uh, two planet names named after my mother and my mother-in-law gave them as certificates for Mother's Day. You can go to kepler.nasa.gov slash index.cfm and you can check out the latest on the Kepler mission. Unfortunately, and this is the part where I hope I don't uh, lose it here, um, just yesterday they announced uh, that Kepler suffered uh, a failure in one of its uh, three reaction wheels. It is presently unable to maintain the pointing necessary to take the data that is required. Uh, I have some good friends of mine who work on the Kepler mission. I know they're uh, a little bit sad, but they're also very happy because there's so much data and it's only a matter of time before that tiny signal of a Earth-sized planet around a star like our own sun is teased out and is found to be right there in the habitable zone. There are a hundred billion suns in our galaxy. Our Earth twins exist. Thank you so much for your time.